welcome. Today we're here at Summer Hayes to talk a little bit about the sizes of pianos and what to look for when you go out and look at pianos because there's a lot of different sizes to choose from. You've probably heard terms like baby grand or concert grand and those are simply indicators of a general idea of what the size of a piano is. They're like categories. So to kind of give you a primer before we talk about why bigger pianos are typically recommended, um, there are generally three rough categories that you can look at for the sizes of pianos. Now there's definitely subcategories to these, but they're usually pretty subjective depending on the professional you talk to. So those three categories are first, usually when a piano is anywhere from a little under five feet to about five foot four, we call that a baby grand piano. Um, and then there's kind of this middle space that has lots of categories in it, but it's basically medium grands. Um, that will contain, if you've ever heard the terms conservatory grand, orchestra grand, or classic grand, those all kind of fall into the category of medium grand pianos. And they'll stem all the way up into even up to eight feet. And then we get to something called concert grand pianos, um, which are usually around nine feet. They can be more and they can be a little bit less. But those are some of the biggest pianos in the world, and those are what we use typically in big concert halls because um, they project a really strong sound. But why is it that bigger pianos are viewed as better or superior? There are actually a couple reasons for that that we'll talk about. Um, the first reason that bigger pianos are better is the soundboard. So the soundboard is the piece of wood that rests underneath the strings and the plate of the piano in a grand piano and it's on the back side of a vertical piano. That piece is really important because it, what it does is it takes the sound and allows it to resonate naturally and brings the sound out of the piano. It's very important for sound. When you have a bigger soundboard, there's more space for that resonation and vibration. And because of that, pianos with bigger soundboard surface areas have the ability to produce a louder, bigger sound. Um, the second reason is that bigger pianos, um, because you know they're typically more expensive and used for you know, bigger venues or nicer occasions, typically have nicer parts put into them by their manufacturers. So if you have a piano that's a five foot baby grand piano, it will typically have really good quality in a good quality brand. However, when you move to a bigger piano, usually that manufacturer is going to put in their better actions or their better rim or higher quality woods or maybe a new element of design that's specific to the bigger pianos and that's again like I said just because of what those pianos are used for so typically you're getting a higher quality bill the bigger the piano is um, within the actual brand itself and then finally the third reason is the bulk of what we want to talk about today and that has to do with string length now strings are very important. Um, you've probably noticed on bigger grand pianos that, or bigger upright pianos that the strings are actually physically longer. And that is an important feature, an important fact or feature of uh, pianos and the type of sound that they produce. So in order to understand that, we have to understand sound itself. Um, as you may have learned growing up, sound actually comes off in a wave. And that's how we represent sound when we think about it. Um, when you hit a key, the hammer hits against the string and the string vibrates. And then what happens is you have a wave that comes off of that that is the sound you hear. There's one big wave, the main wave, that we call the fundamental frequency. And that wave is the note that you're listening to. And that's the most important one. However, that's not the only wave that comes off when you hit a key. There's actually lots of other little waves going off as well. And we call those overtones. Now, to give you an idea of what visually that may look like, when we have our fundamental frequency, this is usually the large wave, okay? So this would be at one point, it comes up and then it goes down and up, and that's our larger wave. But within that, we have these smaller waves that aren't going to be quite as long that also come off. Those are the overtones. And so that's what that kind of looks like. And they can get smaller and smaller, um, which increases the pitch in the overtones. Now, when you have a string and you want to decrease the pitch, so you want to get a lower sound, you, there are two ways to do that. You can either make the string longer or you can make the string thicker. However, there's a problem with making the string thicker. Um, 
And that is that the string gets more rigid. It doesn't vibrate in the same way, and because of that, it doesn't produce the same quality sound. Now on big pianos, we can make those bass strings on the bottom of the piano much longer, which means we don't have to make them as thick. However, on a short piano, they do have to be thicker. Now, as we just talked about, that rigidity is not a good thing. And the reason why is that in common language, without going into a big physics lesson, basically these, when they work together, make a full rich sound. It's like if this wave fits with this wave, then they're gonna make a bigger sound than they would alone. However, when this does not fit with this, they fight against each other. And that creates a sound that isn't as pleasant to us. It doesn't sound as rich or as full. When you have a thick, shorter string on a baby grand piano, for example, you may hear that it doesn't sound as rich. There's, there's a sound that isn't quite as full as it could be, and that's because these waves, a lot of these overtones are not working together. We call that inharmonicity. However, on a big piano, more of these overtones work with the big wave, the main note that you're playing, and they embellish it and make it sound more full and more rich. And that's the reason why smaller pianos and bigger pianos, when you compare them, not only differ in volume, but in the richness of the tone. In order to demonstrate that for you, I have, for starters, a five foot baby grand piano here. Um, this is the smallest piano that Kawhi makes and one of the smallest pianos that we sell. It's a great grand piano, but we're gonna compare its tone to a bigger piano. Now, as I briefly mentioned, the lower registers are probably the biggest influenced um, part of the keyboard. They're the most influenced by this concept of longer strings making a better sound. And so we're going to play down here. I'm going to play a chord for you, and you can listen to it, and then we're going to compare it to a bigger piano. So I play down here. That's a good sound. But now we're going to move over to a bigger piano to compare. Here, by comparison, we have a 5 foot 11 piano, um, which is about a foot longer than the piano we just played on, which may not seem like a lot, but it's gonna make a big difference as I play here the same exact chord I just played. And there's that richness that you hear, as well as the volume that we talked about with soundboards. So you can see right there automatically, you can hear that difference. That's something you'll notice with all the pianos you try out. The bigger you get, um, within the same brand at least, the higher quality sound you're gonna have. Um, and so that's our little explanation today of why bigger pianos are better. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us at smcorum.com um, and have a wonderful week. We look forward to seeing you next week.